Welcome to Ruck Up Podcast. I'm your host, Joel Nest. They can treat soldiers however they want to, and there's no repercussions. When you have soldiers that come back from war and you don't allow them to go and leave or, you know, you start doing these other things that just aren't right. To help support the show and our guests, please check out the show notes and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Nothing interesting on TV? That's why you're listening to DVRadio.net W. DVR. This ain't reality TV! It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal! It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Oh, well, isn't that special? Bloody, don't you think you should rephrase that? Mom, mama said, my mama said, mama said that. My mom. Good day, sir! Now, class is dismissed, gentlemen. I was born in the early 90s. Um, a lot of people consider me a millennial. I don't think so. I'm an old soul. So I'm pretty sure I was born in like the 40s and 50s. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of things that, that, that the older generation than me do um, alike compared to people that are actually my own age. Um, I was raised in North Carolina. Um, I moved to Virginia, did a little bit of time in Tennessee, uh, come back to North Carolina had parents that were all over the place um and for that reason i don't talk to any of them anymore um i joined the army when i was 17 um well i should say the united states army since you have listeners all over the world um i stayed in the army for 10 and a half years um i got medically retired uh, out of the army so i'm 28 and retired out of the army now i work another federal job um, then I, when I got out, um, I don't know how the, um, the military rules are in other countries, which I know ours are, are some of the most strenuous ones, but when you join the military in the United States, you lose your constitutional rights. Um, so I spent 10 and a half years not being able to truly say what was on my mind without having repercussions because I was, I was actually in the army. So now, now for people that don't really understand what you're getting at, do you want to explain a little bit deeper on actually, I'm going to, I'm going to rewind very quickly, but what got right. you into the military in the first place? Why did you want to join? Um, honestly, if you want an honest answer, I have no clue. I, I, I remember <laughs> being like, I remember being like three, four years old. I'm like, I'm joining the army. You, you know what I mean? Like that was just, it was just with me my whole life. Yeah. Um, now, as I got older, um, my my ideas changed. You know, with my upbringing, I knew I wasn't going anywhere in life anyways. Yeah. So I was like, the Army's for me. Um, I'm going to go out and, and do my thing. Uh, and then, you know, I, I just joined. Um, How you know, are you school? Kind of like all of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I... Uh, I didn't really pay attention as much as I should have because I didn't have no one to make me pay attention. I kind of, right. I kind of did my own thing from the time I was eight years old to the time I was seventeen. Okay. Um, so I didn't really have too many. I mean, I, I had a grandma and a great grandma that you know stayed on my, stayed on me. But as far as like, I don't want to say distant. Someone think I'm saying somebody didn't like my parents and stuff like that. Nobody, nobody cared. So right. I, I didn't care after. I don't know, maybe like the third grade, you know, because uh, I was yeah. going to be in trouble if I made straight A's and I was going to be in trouble if I failed. So I was like, well, shoot, I'm not going to work as hard if I'm going to do, if I'm going to get the same, uh, the same punishment regardless of what I do. Right. So, right. Uh, so I, you know, I, I joined the army when I was 17. Um, two weeks after I graduated high school, I actually went to basic training. Um, oh, wow. But to answer your question about the, uh, <laughs> So I actually turned 18 in ba- like halfway through basic training is when I turned 18. Um, okay. So to answer your question about constitutional rights. So um, unfortunately in America, the the military is the social justice like beta team. I, I think that's the word I'm getting. You know, like when you make a video game and it's like, if anything's going to happen, you have people come up the beta testers. They come in right, and right. see if it's okay. going to work or not. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I follow you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the military in the United States. So if they want to make a, a social change to the American society, 
they force it into the military and be like, look, it works in the military, so we can make it work in the civilian world. The only problem is on the civilian world, you have things like constitutional rights and you have the ability to say what's on your mind. Um, right. And so what always works in the military doesn't. So basically, um, when you're in the military, you don't have a, um, a First Amendment at all. Um, you don't have a Second Amendment depending on what kind of commander you have. Um, depending on where you live, like if you live on base, you don't have a Fourth Amendment. Um, in so the military, that's fine. First, yeah, first Amendment sorry, is freedom of speech. Second <laughs> sorry. Amendment, is, no, it's all good. It's all good. No, I just want to make sure our listeners are up to speed on what you're talking about because I don't want them to be left behind. And yeah, so yeah, if, I'm not used to having people from other countries, Joel. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, um, it's all good, brother. So, yeah. so, um let's let's hit the first amendment right off the bat so freedom of speech so let's talk about that what do you mean you don't have the right of freedom of speech when you're in the military? so so you can't say whatever you want to like as an example when obama changed um the don't ask don't tell policy yeah you know you no one had the ability to say you know i don't agree with this you just had to do it it didn't matter okay. if um you know Ever, I, I don't know if you know very many mechanics, but you know, um, you have a, a a tool that's called a dike. Yeah. Well, you you can't call that that because that's offensive, and you can actually get in a lot of trouble for that. Okay. Um, I mean, it's, it's just so many things that you just can't do. Like, you, it's pretty much best if you just keep your mouth shut about anything. Right. Um, and as a conservative, which actually led me to the podcast, <laughs> whenever I got out, is I spent eight of my eight of my years were under Obama. Mm -hmm. And if you were a conservative, if um, you said anything negative about the president, then you would be written up. You know, you would get in a lot of trouble because that's your commander in chief. Like he right. is he is the leader of the armed forces. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as um, as soon as Trump became president, then it changed. If you were a conservative you weren't allowed to say anything positive about the president, but because you will be labeled as racist. But if you were against the president, then um, you were able to say whatever you wanted to. And it made you a, um, a social warrior. Right. So it's really, um, I guess the best way to say is politics has a huge, huge role uh, in the military, which shouldn't be there because you're designed to shoot move and communicate mm -hmm. and that should be all the military is right you know you're you're going out to destroy the enemy you're not going out there to you know hold their hand and you know do whatever and and in a prime example is i was deployed to afghanistan in 2013 yeah. and i don't know if very many people remember that but that's when assad in syria was talking about gassing his own people yeah and the president obama I told Assad that he's drawing a red line in the sand, and if Assad, um, if if Assad crossed that red line, then you know we was going to attack him, and then Assad gassed his own people, and then we didn't do anything. Right. And once that happened throughout the throughout the uh, the country, um, the the Taliban started, you know, atta attacking the American forces more because they realized that we had a president that wasn't going to stand his word, compared to right wrong or indifferent when you look at what happened in iran just here recently yeah you know iran knew that that trump whether you like him or not he's he's gonna stand by his word if he tells you he's he's gonna do something he's gonna do it right right yeah yeah um so yeah i mean i, I don't really well my last thing and then i'll go to the the other amendment um the uh there with the Trying to, I'm trying to say this appropriately. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Put, it's okay. Not, not put some raw emotion into it. So yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, being deployed under Obama versus being deployed over Trump is that if you deployed under Obama and you had to use lethal force or you you had to do something right. um, against the enemy, then you would have to be more worried about um, the repercussions. The president. Yeah, you'd have to be more worried about your president turning his back on you and you going to prison for doing what you were supposed to do. Right. 
compare to as it, I don't know if you've watched like the Eddie Gallagher case, the Navy SEAL that, that yeah. Trump pardoned and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But you at least know that if you can justify why you did it, the president and his team will at least look into it. Right, right. And and not let the the military just do what they want to. Because if you if you saw it, I know you got people from different countries. So the way ours works is the president is the the leader of all the armed forces. Yeah. The only thing the president can't do is declare war. Um, that has to come from Congress. However the president is the boss of the armed forces outside of that. Right. And there was a lot of Navy generals that was talking about the president was undermining their authority. But the problem is the president is the ultimate authority, whether they like it or not. That's, that's the whole purpose of having the chain of command going all the way to the president. No different. Yeah. No different than the brass above you. Right. Right. Exactly. And these generals were like, well, we're going to quit if, you don't do what we suppose what we tell you to right and and my whole thought with that which i was out when when the president took over the the eddie gallagher case but my whole thought of that is is where is that even where where does that ever happen like where does a company commander tell a battalion commander they're going to quit if they don't listen to them are they just going to laugh and turn around and walk away (laughs) exactly and they're going to do whatever they want to and then these generals went on television and you know the democrats in our country started applauding them for standing up to the president which is you're in the military you don't stand up to the president that's the whole point of um being in the military you don't stand up to uh your superior in the military because it's not a civilian job Right, um, but that's that's what I mean by the First Amendment. Right. Um, okay. The second, go ahead. No, nope, go ahead. Yeah, no, I understand. Right. So the Second Amendment is um, if you're on a base and the president, I'm the president, sorry, and the base commander doesn't want you to have firearms, um, then you can't do it. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you you can't carry on base. You if you live outside of base, you can. Um, but if you go on base and you get caught with it, you can get like in stupid amount of trouble. So you're you're trained to kill, you're trained to carry firearms. But Lord forbid, if you carry your own firearm on base or just leave it in your car, you know, say you're in like, say you're in like Fort Hood, which is in Colleen, Texas, which yeah. is um, which is heavily covered in gangs. All right, and you carry your firearm just so you don't stop at Walmart and get robbed by somebody on, on your way home from work. You know, or you, you know, you was driving over the weekend. You just left it in there for your own safety, yeah. and then you drive on base with it, and you get caught with it. Then you know, you're screwed. You know right. what I mean? Right. Um. So when you go to the ability to have your own property and stuff like that, um, the government pretty much owns that. If if you live on base, um, also if you live off base, technically speaking your commander can come uh can come in and check your uh your residence and everything else and um i mean pretty much everything is the government man no, so no I, got a, I got a question about that though wasn't that in, uh put into place because of the shootings that were happening on base no that's, that not, that's been in place true? forever oh okay 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 fair enough. yeah no so 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 here, here's the, the the shootings on base. Okay, not not to get like off subject to me. But no, 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 so, that's fine. I that's something if you want to talk about it, I I completely hear you out on that for sure. So the shootings that happen on base, like with the psychiatrist. Okay, yeah. he he was an Islamic extremist, and Obama failed to call him out for what it was. Okay, mm-hmm. um, but that's exactly what it was. He he was an Islamic extremist, and that was his purpose of the hurting people. Now. You have a lot of commanders, and, and this goes back to the whole thing with the commanders and, and, and President Trump. You have a lot of commanders that think they are um, they are God, hmm. and they can treat soldiers however they want to, and there's no repercussions. Right. And when you have soldiers that come back from war and you don't allow them to go and leave, or you know you start doing these other things that just aren't right— you're going to make people go crazy. Right. And I, I, I have seen a ton of people go crazy in the military. And it's it's not it's not because they um 
it's not because they were in war. It's not because, you know, they seen some bad things. It's it's because of the toxic leadership. The, the leadership that people say that the president has, there's actually commanders that have those leadership skills that are, are really horrendous. Like, like one day I had a... Um, I went to a high school football game with my daughter because she she was a um, she was a freshman at the time, and it was one of the first football games of the season. And I went to the football game. My phone had died because I left right after work. And whenever I got back to my car to charge my phone, <clears throat> I had like four voice messages for my commander, and he was like screaming and hollering and just acting like a Neanderthal. Yeah because my phone died and my phone shouldn't die and I should answer anytime he calls me and you know all this other mess oh, yeah. And, yeah like then he also called my supervisor because my supervisor didn't answer his phone either yeah now me and my supervisor had spent probably 80 hours or more that week at work yeah you know what I mean and um I was at a football game and he took his family out to dinner yeah and what was happening is the commander was going through a divorce so he took all his anger out on us he couldn't take it out on his wife right you know so since he was our commander he felt like he had the authority to make our lives hell just because his soon-to-be ex-wife was taking him through the ringer right right yeah yeah I don't. I don't know if that's making any sense or not. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, definitely um, making sense. That yeah. happens. That happens in the private industry as well. Yeah. That happens. That happens a lot. But yeah, no, I, I totally feel. I totally follow you. Um. So then, um. Also in the military, unfortunately, um, what happened to the president is what happens to all soldiers. Um. You in in America. You're innocent until proven guilty. In the United States military, you're guilty until you're proven innocent. Mm. Um, and I'm hopefully by just me saying that, you understand how ridiculous that sounds. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, like, I, if if you're not going to ask me, it's going to come up eventually. So let's look at the sexual assault in the United States military. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's like extremely through the roof in these numbers. All right. Yeah. However. Like I said, I spent my entire adult life in the military. So what happens is you have these women that use things the good Lord gave them to get whatever they want. Not all yeah. of them, but there's a large portion of them. Yeah. And whenever that body part doesn't get them what they want anymore, then they go out and with the intent of destroying anybody that they had relationships with. Mm. Well, the first thing that comes up is the R word. Right. Yeah. And um, I guess everybody knows I'm, I'm talking about rape. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I actually, ironically, I was just talking to, I interviewed somebody a couple of days ago about this exact situation. So this will actually play off of my last interview very well, but carry on. Well, what happens is you have, you have these women that will cry will cry the r word and what happens is these men's lives are are immediately over um they're they're viewed as rapists right they go ahead and they get arrested they go ahead and get charged right they get um removed of rank or they lose their pay so then yeah. when when you get a, depending on the level of uh, depending on the level you're at, like how high your commander is, whether it's a company commander, battalion commander, brigade commander, division commander, whatever it is, depends on how much pay they can take. So yeah. say say you're a male soldier and you got a wife and three kids and say, you know, you slept with some girl and while you were deployed, which you know you shouldn't have done, but then you come back and she's mad because you're not going to leave your wife for her. And she said, then she says she rapes you. Well, then your commander takes half your pay. Yeah. Well, if the commander takes half your pay, then now your kids are starving yeah, and yeah. Yeah. your wife is starving and homegirls over there doing her own thing and you're locked up now. Yeah. So then so then you go, say it takes six months to a year for you to get a court hearing. All right, then it goes through and is like, okay, well, you know what? This was actually a lie. It was consensual. Yeah, you had sex while you was married, so you'll get in trouble for that. But you know what? It wasn't actually rape. Well, yeah. 
she it's no harm, no foul on her, but you're still guilty. You're you're still a rapist. Like the rest of your career, the rest of your career is is, is done. It doesn't matter. Well, I've heard that they're putting uh, harsher charges on the female that um, accused of rape if it was consensual as well. Yeah, and but nowadays, uh, on, not not yeah, so much before. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah, yeah. that's within like the last two years. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, no, no, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And and honestly, that that's only going to be done if it must be done. Right, right, um, right. And and that's one of those things that it's going to decide if the commander wants to do it or not. Absolutely. But Absolutely. if this, the, the same chick slept with the commander that slept with everybody else, then is the commander really going to charge her with something like that? Yeah. Because then guess where he's going to be? Yeah. So as a, as a, as a prime example, when, when I was deployed, all right, and this, this goes back to Obama's ruling of don't ask, don't tell. Um, when I was deployed, I had this soldier that was yelling and, and hollering at these other soldiers saying that they're going to to write them up um, because they were having uh, heterosexual sex and they're not allowed to. But then she would go around and yell at the other females and ask them if they're going to come because, uh, you know, the barracks are separated for men and women. Yeah. And... But then she would go in there and talk about sleeping with all these other females yeah. um, at the same time. So, and then when the uh, the command staff when they when they found out you had all the you know these basically like lesbian orgies going on in in the barracks, they're like, hey, look, y'all y'all need to stop this, um, or we're gonna write you up just like we do the heterosexual um, yeah. relationship. And you know what they said? They right. said they were going to file a, a, a equal opportunity complaint on them because they're picking on them because they're gay. Huh. So, so there is no, there is, there is no like it, it's so political, man. You you can't do anything in the military, and it drives people absolutely insane. Right. Um, and all in all, all this goes back to um, these shootings that are happening on bases. Mm. You know, people aren't doing what they're supposed to. People don't have a voice. People go and be like, "Hey, look." Uh, as an example, um, that lieutenant colonel, I can't think of his daggum name now, the one from Ukraine that, yeah, that, yeah. that testified against the president, yeah. right? So if that happened in the real army and outside of this political BS and a, a say, a private lied on an officer, that private would get uh, an Article 15 or... Um, we'll get yeah. charged under uniform code of military justice. Yeah, they, they're going to yeah. get court martial for lying on an officer. Yeah, yeah. If if any officer lied on their officer above them, and and it's not even a lie, it could be the truth but can't be proven. Because right. if it, even if it's the truth and it can't be proven, it's still a lie. Right, right. Um, and so like what happened with him is he got removed from the Pentagon, and then the army's like, well, we're going to do our our best to make sure that he's not retaliated against. Well, retaliation is only against someone that tells the truth and gets somebody in trouble for telling the truth. But if you bluntly lie on somebody, that's not retaliation. That's, I mean, you have soldiers all over the country and all over the world in the American army that's saying that the commander's doing things illegally that they shouldn't do. And they're the ones getting charged because, um, you know, they they it, it's true and everybody knows it's true, but it can't be proven in court. So therefore, the commander gets away with it. Right. So yeah, I, I guess that's enough on my uh, my conversations. No, 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 no. It's no. absolutely <laughs> spot on for sure. Um, what was your what was it like being uh, deployed under Obama in 2013? Um. So well, when when Obama shut the government down. Um, in 2013, um, I had walked over to the gym that we had over there and they had actually cut there. There's a thing called armed forces network. Um, I know, I know your Canadians use it with us, but I don't know if y'all have y'all's own version of it. Um, but, uh, it was actually shut down and that was like our source to the outside world, you know? And I, I know it doesn't sound like much, but in, in prison in America, you, you have to give the prisoners television. Yeah. Um, and you have to be able to give them, um, 
access to the outside world. Like they have to have the radio, they have to have a television, they have to be able to get newspapers and and magazines and and stuff like that. And because it's right. so called a constitutional right, but you know, here we are trying to watch, you know, I guess you say a football game, trying to feel American and you know forget where we're at, and it gets cut off because the government was shut down. So you um, couldn't you couldn't communicate via email, text. Uh, calls nothing well no you could you oh, can okay. but you can't you can't get um the afn network the right, armed right, forces right. network is yeah. ran by the government right, right so it's basically like it's, it's basically like a, a army television or a yeah. military television but they get rights to like local sports you know and, and you know sports are well it sounds it sounds crazy sports are sometimes the ultimate stress release yeah you know you you can just sit there and just forget where you're at Right, right, right. You know, when when you're off, you you can forget where you're at. Um, they also cut down our midnight chow, which for like uh, me and the people I work with, midnight chow was our dinner. Right, um, right. Because, yeah, yeah. Because your timing. We, yeah. So that that was our basically our supper. Yeah. And and they shut that down, so we was only allowed to get two meals a day, which I, I understand that you got to understand where I'm coming from. Going back to prison. In prison, you have to have three meals a day. Yeah. You know, so it, it's really um, not to mention the 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 money that was brought. Our, our Most of our gear wasn't equipped for what we needed to do, like our body armor. Yeah, yeah. Our, our, yeah. our head gear, stuff like that. I mean, it, it none of our gear was equipped to shoot uh, or to stop a 7.62 round or yeah, an AK yeah. round. yeah. You know, it, it 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 was basically designed to stop our own. So it was worthless to even wear. Um, because the seven six two is gonna destroy it and then anything in between the plates. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So so there's that and you know, a lot of people talking about the uh, the president removing government funds um, to build the wall to build the wall in Mexico. But what they're failing to realize is the Obama administration had removed billions of dollars of our own money from yeah. from the military. The president increased it and then took some away. So it's a whole lot different in when you drastically increase it and then and then take some away compared to just taking away. Um, period. Right. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it, but but none of that none of that showed up on the news. Um, nobody shows about how much money is actually um, wasted in the military, especially by the commanders and you know things like <clears throat> things like that. That that equal like we have a um. You got to keep your budget in, up, though, right? And, but see, that's the problem. If you don't keep your budget up, then you won't get a you don't you won't get your budget next year. Right, <laughs> and that's and that's the problem. So so we'll have say. Say we got to have soldiers that need to get trained, okay? And I go in there like, hey, I got these soldiers that need to get trained. They're like, oh no, we can't, we can't train them. We can't send them to school. <clears throat> I'm like, why not? We don't have no money. And then the next week they come up like, all right, we have ten grand that we have to spend by the end of the day. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Like, well, if we don't spend it by the end of the day, then we'll lose it. It's like, okay, so I needed these soldiers to go to school, and they could have already been to school, and you told me no because there was no money. Yeah, and then like, oh well, that's a different pot of money. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, first of all, that's BS. Um, second of all, it, it could just take one person to change the money over because it, it's money. It, it's not. It's not like a cryptocurrency. Hmm. Like it, it's literally you just need to move it over. Well, then what ends up happening is you have a commander that gets a five thousand dollar freaking uh, office chair. Yeah, you you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. you yeah. get, you know, hold where was on. where was the money from that coming from to begin with, right? Well, that that's the point because yeah. they say they say that well we have to spend it or we're going to lose it. So the problem with that is is I'm I'm sure you can, I'm sure you understand Joel, but in case anybody else doesn't, the problem with that is is if you have one unit that has $10,000 extra a month. And then every unit in the in the United States Army has $10,000 a month that or a $10,000 at the end of the year they have to spend and they spend it frivolously. You know, that adds up drastically. 
Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, that, that's that's uh, millions and millions of dollars that yeah. it was just frivolously spent just so they don't lose it the next year. Yeah, yeah. Which Absolutely. that idea is, I understand why that idea is there, but in the same sense, the the U.S. government has went to Congress and asked for, or the U.S. military has went to Congress and asked for all this money, and they've allocated all these different ways, and what's end up happening is they don't know how to spend it. Yeah. And what they do is that is they hold on to it uh, and don't let no money get spent the entire year. So we have soldiers not getting properly trained. We have equipment that's not um, properly taken care of. We have all this stuff coming up. And then they come to someone like me and be like, all right, you got to spend this money today. What do you need? And I'm like, well, where do I begin? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Like, like you, you've starved me you starved me for the last physical year yeah and and now you're coming to me and be like hey you should be able to fix everything because you got this surplus of money no i don't because this surplus of money i could have used over the entire year and some of these issues could have been prevented yeah. but since you allowed them to get to to wait now they're no longer minor issues now they're extreme issues and i need a new engine for this vehicle because that's ten thousand dollars right there because yeah you decided that you know what i mean yeah, yeah yeah you didn't want to keep up on the oil changes or some shit yeah yeah all, all because of a, a, um, of a few bucks so a, any any positives out of the military oh dude i absolutely loved it don't don't okay. get me wrong <laughs> yeah no like no 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 i the the things i complain about aren't the military yeah it's, it's, the, it's the politics within the military yeah that's, i totally that's get all, it. that's all yeah. it is if yeah if the politics got out of the military, all right, and and they understood that. Okay, well, let me try to explain it like this. So, with with American military and the transgender thing, okay. So, allowing transgenders into the military, a lot of people are like, well, if they wanted to fight for their country, they should. But here, the problem with that is, is it's a two and a half to five year process that those those service members will not be able to fight and defend our country because they'll be under medical observation um and if a regular soldier like me like i told you i got medically retired yeah if if i'm there for a year i'm out you know i'm getting removed yeah but if a person comes in there and they want to change their gender there's two and a half to five years that they have to get out plus or not including the amount of time that they would have to spend at a psychiatrist's office um, before and after so they can show the or so they can understand that what they're doing is okay and it's acceptable in society right um so things like that it when the the government isn't no longer designed to kill and and that's one thing that's shocking the world with president trump is president trump is like hey we have a military we're designed to kill people first and foremost mm -hmm. that's that's what we do you know, we're not a police force. We're not a fire department. We're not Girl Scouts. We're mm -hmm. literally designed to kill people. Um, and when you put the politics inside, that's not that's not the case anymore. So, Joel, um, I remember the whole time I was in the military, um, we talked about, and, and it's because of the time I'm in now, because obviously if it was earlier, it would be the Nazis and, you know, the Viet Cong and stuff like that, but for me, in, in the time frame that I was in, it, it was uh, it was terrorists, it was Islam. So, we would we would take videos, and especially when deployed, and, and they'll brainwash you into um, basically thinking of these people as less as animals. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because if you, if you take the value out of, a, out of a person, it's easier to kill them, so to speak. Yeah. If the time comes, well, then you come back to the United States and they're like, okay, now you can't say nothing to these people because these people are good and they're loving and they're kind and they're sweet and they're innocent and not all of them are the same. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, you realize you just took all these people and you just taught them for the last year and a half, two years constantly and shoved these pr propaganda videos down their head that these people are bad. Um, and now you bring them back home. You're like, oh, nope, forget about it. You can't say anything to anybody. Or you're gonna get in trouble for, um, like the First Amendment, you know, because right. hate speech, hate speech is the First Amendment in America. Um, yeah. You know, hate hate speech is protected speech, and if and hate speech is the only reason why we have a First Amendment. Right. Um, 
But so it, it the reason why I say that, I know it probably don't make no sense, but to tie it together is if you took the politics out and you were just a fighting force, then the military is fine. The brotherhood was fine. Um, right. Everything was good. But, you know, like like when the president took over, when, when he got voted in, all right, you had brother against brother and sister versus sister all over politics. Yeah. Because Trump was now president, not Obama. Right. Um, and it's just it's just a lot, man. I mean, it, it really is. And, and if you're having an issue and you can't go to someone because you know what their political what their political view is on somebody and you know, hey, if I have this problem and, you know, I'm a Trump supporter and they're a liberal, then their views are going to be held uh, more more honest than mine because right. just because I said I, I support Trump, then now I'm going to be associated as, as being a racist. Right. You know right. what I mean? Yep. So, yeah, fair enough. so it, out, outside of politics, man, dude, I absolutely loved it. I loved every bit of it. I, I loved um, – I love getting dirty. I, I yeah. love shooting things. Um, I love uh, working out. I, I love the people that I met. Um, Afghanistan was, I mean, I met some probably the coolest people I'll ever meet in my life over there. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I, I met some awesome Canadians over there. They look like that movie Universal Soldier. Um, <laughs> yeah. With Bill Goldberg. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're, uh, their their kits are like insane, dude. Matter of fact, I saw this one Canadian chick, Joel. She was maybe, dude. I don't know. She maybe had to been like 110 pounds, if yeah. that much, right? Yeah. And it, dude, her gear was like three times her size, and yeah. I was like, that's a bad, that's a bad woman right there. Cause, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, like, like her head and everything disappeared between her her um her helmet, cause y'all know y'all got those neck things that yeah, we don't yeah. have. That yeah. goes up like half half your head. Yeah. So like, yeah, her whole her whole entire head was just gone. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I deployed with uh, all right. Let me let me try to let me try to think of this. Uh, the Jordanians, the yeah. Georgia or guys from Georgian, the yeah. Georgians, the ones from Georgia. Um, I deployed with guys from the UK, Canada, Australia um, probably, Australia, Bulgaria. Um, so funny story since you started the Australians and I don't know if you have, um, I don't know if you have listeners in Australia, but I, I do. And I have some friends that are over there. So we were in the shower one day and this Australian dude just comes in there and, and we had like the, the real, uh, I don't even know if they're called plastic, but I guess that's what we'll call it. The shower curtains just so yeah. you have some kind of privacy. Yeah. 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 And homeboy just walks in there and just like rips them open and like, standing butt naked and just started having conversations with Blue everybody <laughs> in each shower yeah and we're like dude come on man like we're yeah. trying to shower we're not trying to have a conversation with that's you that's hilarious like oh my god go get your own shower dude let's talk yeah. later when, you know <laughs> we're dressed yeah you know this um, is my this is my me time <laughs> yeah they're like well try not to get graphic on your show but yeah it yeah. it, it it really is your me time when you're in the shower and you're deployed. For sure, for sure. Um, <laughs> um, so after you got back, you, uh, well, not after you got back, but so you've been in the service for 10 and a half years and yeah. um, you're out and you s decided to start a podcast. What was yes, the sir. reason for that? Um, I had my first amendment back. Okay. Um, but did, so but why, why the podcast? Why that medium? Well, I don't have a radio show, um, and I actually had a podcast from a guy. So I started before I joined the army. I started cage fighting in the basement of a church. Um, oh yeah, and uh, yeah, and so there's a guy down here that does an MMA podcast um, off of Anchor, which is the reason why I decided to use Anchor. Yeah, and. Uh, he um he had got with a guy that I used to train with, and and the guy I used to train with was okay. like, "Hey, you got to go." I'm gonna stop you for a second because you can't just say that I used to cage fight in the bottom basement <laughs> of a church and just scrape by that. 
So you want to fill us in on that one a little bit? <laughs> All right. So um, I started I started doing karate when I was 14. Um, yeah. And then I uh, then I ended up on I think it was like Craigslist or something. And there was an ad in there. And it was like, hey, you know, do you want to punch someone in the face? Do you want to choke them out? You know, do you want to be like a real man? Like, it was, the way the way Byron wrote it, who's my trainer, the way he wrote it was very um, graphic. <laughs> well, yeah, but it it, it, it was kind of like a Braveheart speech. Right, you know right, what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Like, like when you was reading it, you knew what like you were getting hyped up to go destroy something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I ended up going down there. Um, I'll actually send you the link to the podcast so you can listen to me talk to it for like an hour and a half. Absolutely. Um, but but basically, um, basically what ended up happening was showed up. There was a church there. I was like, all right, I guess I'm in the wrong place. And then I started seeing these just big, huge, giant dudes um, coming out from in the basement you know, with like boxing gloves on and MMA gloves and like all this other stuff. So I went, went down, I was like, oh, yep, this must be the place. <laughs> so, you know, I went down there and, and I don't know if you know, but I I, I actually went to school to be a minister. Um, okay. And that's what my college degrees in. Right. Um, so it, it was very fitting in my life that, you know, everything I'd went through, that that was my outlet. So right. I ended up going down there there the the town near where i live is called wilmington north carolina they um they had an underground fight club basically in one of the bars that was down or nightclubs <clears throat> that was down in town and what happened is they were just letting everybody come in there and if you wanted to fight you just go in there and get in a cage and you just start beating up people right um, so we went and um we destroyed that um and then we stopped doing it because uh, they started allowing people with like uh, they started allowing like alcoholics to come in there and, and okay. gang members and yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah. so so one of one of my buddies um, him and his brother they uh, <clears throat> they was on there and and the older one he ended up fighting this guy and he ended up like beating the snot out of him like it was crazy all right well afterwards him and his brother were walking through the parking the parking deck that was right there behind where the nightclub was and needless to say homeboy that he just beat up um his head got shoved into this quarter panel of my buddy's car um oh, yeah so he got beat up again because yeah. he tried to jump he tried to jump the guy that just beat him right in a controlled environment um, right right yeah yeah, so then Probably. it turned in from a, it turned in from a controlled environment to a street fight. Yeah. Um, so once that started happening, we're like, all right, this is this is getting us nowhere, and, and you know, then we started actually doing it, you know, the legal way with the box commission and stuff like that. But yeah. um, Joe, honestly, man, we we had people come in there that would that would threaten to kill us. Um, we had people come in there on on, on meth and on coke and. Um, we had people coming in there that just beat the hell out of their wife and kids. Um, we just like the worst of society. The worst, yeah. The worst. The, like we, worst yeah. of the worst. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Like we, we had come in there and you, you will be surprised what happens when you choke somebody out for, you know, 30, 45 seconds. Um, yeah. um, because after you choke them out and you get like that anger and aggression, then, you know, we would just take him upstairs and pray with him. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, I, it, I'm I'm a firm believer, and you know, my podcast is about religion, not yours. But um, I'm I'm a firm believer. If you if you go out and if, if you're trying to grab people, you have to go out to to where the worst is. Yeah. Um, and and I'm telling you, man, we would go out there and and we would have some very just anger, man. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just men that had no direction and didn't know where they were going, and they, it, it was just anger and it was just frustration and um, it was just rough, man. So so you know, we'd choke them out, we'd punch them in the head a couple times, and then we'd take them up church upstairs to the church um, to the um, 
to the altar. You know, we'll pray for them. They'll give their life to Christ. We'll give them a Bible, we'll give them a hug, go back downstairs and choke them out again. Hmm. Um, you know, yeah. and it worked. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm um, sure it did. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, I, I met some of my very good friends um, that way. And then eventually um, my wife started coming and, and uh, we fought each other for, I don't know, a few months or whatever. Um, and then I guess she liked it more than I thought she did. And then she decided that, you know, we could be together and I'd marry her. And then here we are, um, we're working on 10 years. Congratulations. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, um, so the podcast, tell our, tell our listeners what the show is called, what it's about. Give us a little bit of a breakdown of it. So, so the name of it is actually the lock on everything. And I got that name from my minister. So I was telling him, I was like, Hey, it's like, I'm gonna start a podcast. I was like, but I don't know what I want to call it. And he's like, well, what's it about? And I was like, everything. And he's like, well, why don't you call it the lock on everything? He's like, because your last name is Locklear. And I'm like, I don't like you, but yes, we'll <laughs> yeah, go with that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so it's really a play on, um, play on word from my last name um but one of the one of the things that i do is is i want to talk about everything that people are taught not to talk about and you know that's race religion and politics and i i believe which you know people may think differently but i believe that we as a society regardless of what country we're from <clears throat> we're we're taught not to talk about things so that when we do talk about it, it's something that is like a cardinal sin almost. Right. Um, and and so when you when you do talk about it, people just they lose their mind. Um, it's it's not like back in the day where you know you had words with somebody, y'all got mad, you know y'all got in a fist fight or whatever, and then after y'all got y'all's anger out, y'all sat around drunk a beer and actually had a conversation like grown folks. Right. You know, now it's, you know, you just say something and you'll lose family member, you'll lose friends that are, you know, you've had friends your entire life. Like I was talking about in the military, I got friends, I, I got a couple of them that are, I'm really still cool with, but I had some that I knew in the military, they'd take a bullet for me. But then I come out as a Trump supporter and they turn their back on me like instantly. Really? Uh, yeah like oh well you're just actually you're not that i'm surprised That's, yeah no yeah I, I mean and it's it's really that bad yeah um you know you go you go from having someone that will stand up against any enemy and you know will fight toe to toe um with the other person over you and then all of a sudden they find out you know who your political supporter is or who you affiliate with and then all suddenly you know, they hate you and, you know, seems like they'll go, they'll work for the other team against you. Yeah. You know it's I mean? so weird how that works. Hey, it's just a, like, I don't know for me. I, I guess I just don't give a shit enough. Like I, I guess I do, but I don't like, I, I don't see, I, I can't see religion getting me all worked up. I can't see political correctness getting worked up. I can't see politics getting me worked up. Like I, if somebody said to me, oh, well, I support this guy and, and I personally don't, okay, fuck, whatever. It, it, to me, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> like, why why lose a friendship or a family member over something, I guess, in my mind, so minuscule? Obviously, in their mind, it's not. Obviously, in their mind, it's the world. But I just don't, I guess I just don't think that way. And I'm sure well, there's a lot of people that don't, but... Most people in America, at least, okay, so I, I got to speak on, on America. I can't speak for other countries. But most of the time in America, people on the conservative side are think more like what you just said because it's more of a, um, well, okay, you're a socialist, so you're a moron, but I still love you. I just want to let you know you're a socialist moron. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And that, that's yeah. pretty much the extent of it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you support Bernie Sanders. Okay, well, you're a socialist. Like, yeah. you're anti-American, but whatever, idiot. However, on the left or on the liberal side, 
if you disagree with them, you're a sexist, you're a homophobic, you're a bigot, you're this, you're that, you know, I don't know if I said racist, but you're racist. I mean, it, it's, it's so insane. The it's amount one, it's one or the other. You're either good or bad. That's what you're getting at. Well, no, that, I mean, that's instantly, that, that's instantly what it is. Um, yeah. like, like if I, if I go and I talk to someone about politics and they're di- different gender than me, then I'm sexist. If I talk to someone that's a different color than me, I'm racist. Yeah. If I talk to someone that's a different religion than me, then um, Islamophobic or I'm, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, I just disagree it, with you. I don't hate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And and unfortunately, that's how these arguments go. And I really think these arguments grow like this because of the i the entire idea that um. The idea that we're trained not to talk about politics and, and religion and different things like that, and when we can't have discourse and we can't have conversations, yeah. um, then we don't know how to handle each other. So going back to your thing, if you don't, you know, because you do military first responders and stuff like that, so if you have a cop that doesn't go through BLET and then you send them out in the field, you know, what's going to happen? Some yeah. some some bad stuff is going to go down. You know yeah. what I mean? You yeah. you send you send a soldier that doesn't go to basic training or boot camp, whatever you want to call it, and you send them overseas, they're not going to know what to do. And yeah. so, you know, we have like like as an example, <clears throat> in in America, education, the um, even when the teacher's wrong, the teacher's right, and right, right. you can't yeah, change yeah. it. Yeah. So, so I I'm very I'm very open with my children. And I, I challenge my children on a lot of different issues, okay? And and some of the things I challenge them on is not always um, politically correct. And, and, and here's an example. As an example, we're talking about um, the greatest military leaders in the history of our world, basically, okay? In history of humanity. Yeah. And that's what my daughter's... Um, our, her project was on and I sat her down one day and I was like alright look I was like you gotta understand I was like I know what your teacher's asking for I was like but if you really really want to look at and take an opti- or not an optimistic view but take a neutral view and you want to base military leaders solely on their leadership and not what they did as if it's right or wrong I was like some of the most um, evil people in our history would be classified as some of the greatest military leaders in humanity. Mm. And she looked at me and she's like, what do you mean? And I was like, okay, well, let's look at this fact. I was like, look at Adolf Hitler. He's like, she's like, yeah. I was like, he's a bad dude. Right. She's like, yeah. I was like, he's absolutely hundred percent evil. Right. She's like, well, yes, sir. Cause you know, I'm in the South in America. So we say, sir, and ma'am. Yeah. So, so she's like, yes, sir. You know, he, he He's very horrible what he did. And I was like, okay, well, look at this. I was like, but you got to understand what he did. He made an entire group of people that looked differently than him and convinced them that people that looked like them were good and the people that looked like him were bad, and he led them. No. And she's like, what are you talking about? I was like, well, he believed that blonde hair and blue eyes was perfect, but he had brown hair and brown eyes. And she's like, really, Dad? I was like, no, yeah, seriously. He convinced an entire group of people that everyone that looks like him was evil except for him, and everyone that looked like them were great. Right. And I was like, now, if you go to your school and talk to your teacher, then obviously me and her are going to have to have a conversation, and it's not it's not going to go over very well. I was like, but if if we're going to have these, you know, these different discussions, then we're going to talk about it. Right. It's just like, you know, if, if you go, you know, we were talking about, I was like, you know, if you go to England, you know, our founding fathers were terrorists. Yeah. I was like, if if you're in America, our founding fathers were heroes. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, so you, yeah. I was like you know, so I try yeah. I try to get them, I try to get them to look at all sides of every angle, not to necessarily change the view of if it was right or wrong, right? But to look at all sides of histories, the good, the bad, and the ugly, so it actually allows them to have discussions about different situations and different things without just getting upset and just you know hollering and screaming and and just having 
you know, a complete mental breakdown, basically. Yeah, absolutely. So, and and that's the purpose of the podcast. And if you see it, you know, I got, I talked to, um, I talked to um, national politicians. I talked to local politicians in my area. I talk about religion. I talk about um, race and creeds. I talk about. I mean, I, I really talk about anything and and everything that, you know, not not necessarily to cause controversy, but to get people just to be able to listen, and and just think deeper about things. And like you said, man, it, if you don't agree, just don't agree. Go drink a beer and sit down and talk about it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What um. What advice can you give people that are looking to get in the military? Um, in the American military, in the military period. Um, well, let's go to the American military. All right. So, so the biggest thing is not to be a social warrior justice or social yeah. justice warrior. Yeah. Um, because that's that's not going to do anything at the end of the day. The second thing is. You have to understand that that joining the military, you're agreeing to die or kill someone. That's that's what you're agreeing to, and sometimes possibly both. Mm. Um, and if if you don't have the intent of dying for someone else, or you don't have the intent of killing someone that's that that's planning on harming someone else, then you don't need to join. Right. Um, because when you when you're home side, and you have all this political stuff that goes on, once the bullets start flying, politics stops. And yeah, it, it's yeah. amazing, Joel. It it's so amazing how that works. Like you're fed all this nonsense while you're at home, and then as soon as things go haywire, every all the all politics stops and common sense comes in. Yeah, that should have been there the entire time. Right, right. Um, and then the last thing, man, is you just it, it's got to be more than just education you know you can't join the military because you want free college right you can't join the military just because you're trying to get out of town you can't join the military for these ulterior motives and not understand that it may come a time when you're going to die like i i don't understand like you can join and do it for god and country and family and then know these are the benefits of you going. These are the right. benefits of what, what you're doing. But right. if you if you join for the benefits and not for what you're actually doing, then it, it's going to be very difficult. Right. Uh, Absolutely. What is the day in life you look like right now when you're working? A day for me? Yeah. <clears throat> so I, uh, I have a federal job, so I can't say what I actually do. Um, but basically, um, I get up super early in the morning um listen to the wife fight with the kids and <laughs> do everything they do while i'm eating my cereal and looking at them like they're retarded um because most of the time what they're doing is what i would do yeah <laughs> and, and so it's really hard and, and they know it um so uh then i end up going to work and i work uh most time eight hours and then i come home and whenever I get, as soon as I get home, um, I start going, going online, looking at different things, looking at what happened in the world today, um, starting, starting drama on Facebook, um, and, you know, different social media. Um, yeah. and then, you know, I, by the time I get done setting up interviews or, or doing things, like you said, like, um, we were talking about Patreon earlier. Um, yeah. and different things. I mean, which I don't know if people understand, Joel, but you know, like me and you've been doing, we've been on here for about an hour now. Okay. And that's all, that's all people that listen are going to see is that hour. Yeah. You know, they're not going to see the, the three months that me and you have talked to each other before this. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not going to see, you know, it may take you what an hour two hours to to edit it and then you got to upload it and then you got to share it and then i got to share it and i mean it it's a full-time job um <laughs> it is i mean uh, it's funny it's funny you say that like i don't want to cut you off on that but everybody that i've interviewed just um one of the main things they talk about is the time consumption yeah it's a lot 
I mean, I mean, it really, especially if you got a full time job too, because yeah. this is a full time job. Yeah. And 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 that's why I ask people, and I hope you don't mind, but that's why I ask people to like things, to share things. Yeah. Um. Absolutely. You know, if, if if you can get on Patreon and and donate a dollar to Joel, you know, it's it's a dollar, it's a bag of chips, it's a soda, yeah. you know, it's yeah. it's what it is, and it doesn't seem like much, but you know, if you have a hundred people give a dollar, it really adds up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, absolutely. And everything, everything is so expensive. Um, whether it's 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 Streamyard like I got you into, yeah. Um, whether it's like trying to buy merchandise or like you have your own website, which I've been trying to figure out how you do that because that is so expensive to have a, a um a website that's fully operational. Yeah. Um, I mean every, everything costs us money, and and so I mean it's crazy, man. Um, I probably spend um maybe maybe 60 hours a week if not more on my podcast um yeah. Yeah. whether it's you know finding people on facebook and and messaging them um trying to get sponsors trying to get uh affiliation affiliate programs trying to get uh interviews with people i mean it, it's you know before i started podcasting and i guess this makes it a little bit easier but before i started podcasting i always wondered why people would pay like a million dollars for a painting yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. just a painting. Right. But since I've been podcasting, it's actually clicking in my head is, okay, well, you're not paying for the painting. You're paying for the the paint that's in the picture, the brushes. You're paying for the artist's time. You're paying for right. the schooling. You're paying for, you know, just like just like if you have a, a I guess you'd say, a real job. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean – I mean, it's it's it, million million moving parts. People, I'm sure people that are listening because there are podcasters that listen, they get it. Uh, but it's just like any other job. Um, and when you work another job and you have a family and you have a podcast and you have a X Y Z after that, like it's your life is pretty busy. And I think that's just what people need to realize that podcasters, for the most part, that isn't their full time job, but. But it's fun for us. Like it's, it is a hobby for us as well. So I mean, oh yeah, I mean, I I mean, I I really think it's a hobby. But I mean, everybody would like to turn this hobby into a job. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, it it actually do it to where you know, like you, like you got people all over the, you know, you got people all over the world. And uh, I got some friends in Australia, so like I reach out to them and like, hey, I I need Australia lit up on my map, so go listen to Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and like I did you, I was like, hey, Canada's not listed on my map no more. So go listen to an episode just so it it starts light Absolutely. lighting back up, so I can see Absolutely. like where my range is. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it it's it's really hard, Joel. Um, especially especially when you put so much time and effort into it, and then, um you start getting the uh the funk or the blues you, yeah. you know what i mean and and you're starting to be like man do i really want to do this you know and- yeah i i honestly i think that's kind of something that i i i don't really struggle with because i i don't i force myself to just kind of plow through it and just yeah. enjoy it for what it is and enjoy it for the reason i started it as opposed to looking at the stats and getting bummed out because xyz like to me it's just like I don't know. I did this for me to begin with and more of a mental health thing and it's helping. So to be honest, if I get fucking two listeners and I get two listeners, if I get a million listeners and I get a million listeners, like it's just, I honestly don't care at the end of the day. I, I appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. I've always said I appreciate it, but I mean, realistically, I don't want to put any numbers on the fact of making myself happy or not because I guess it is what it is. What I mean that that I'm glad you said the mental health thing. So I I really think that subconsciously one of the reasons why I do it too, um, and 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 I say subconsciously as in subconsciously why I started it because it's starting to it's starting to become understandable in my head now as as I go on. But it right. subconsciously. When I started it, I really think it was for mental health reasons. It it was for, right. you know, me to get out of my head because you know, like I told you, man, I, I wanted to be in the army since I was probably three or four. Um, yeah, yeah. That's just that's just what I wanted to do, 
Um, so whenever I got out last year, I mean, it, it was, I mean, you could basically say that I went through a nasty divorce. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. With, with the military. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it hurt, dude. Like I lost my best friend. Yeah. Um, I know I trashed the army for like 20 minutes on here, but like, it, it was really like my whole world just stopped. Um, July, uh, January 31st of, of 2019, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I got my wife, I got my kids, I got everything like that, but my heart and soul was gone. It, it, it was snatched from me, dude. I, I pretty much lost a spouse or a child or, you know, and I know that's kind of ridiculous to say, but that's really how heavy it was on my heart. So I ended up laying in bed for probably, probably a good four or five weeks, almost 24 um, seven. Yeah. I ended up gaining, uh, let's see, probably about, probably about 60 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Um, just because I would go, I would lay in bed. My, my wife was having to beat me to get out of bed, you know, and yeah, cause I, I just didn't, I didn't know what to do. And didn't I have to sounds, drive. Yeah. 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 I know it sounds ridiculous, but I mean, but did, but did this help? Start oh yeah. That's what, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. You know, subconsciously I did it for mental health and I didn't realize, but now, now I'm starting to realize because good. I can get to talk to other people. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Joel, I, I don't know if you're a religious person, but me and you met each other in like the craziest freaking way ever. Yeah. Um, and you know, I just force you to stick around, basically. Um, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, I call. I, I mean, I message you like, you know, all hours of the day and night, and you know, randomly, yeah. like Joel, I have a question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm like, here. I'm here, and I'll, I'll have questions for you too. So don't worry about it. But I mean, well, I, I, I'm I'm really glad, like you know, whether you believe in in religion or circumstances or, or whatever. But I'm just gonna say it, I'm I'm glad the Lord brought us together because I, I I it it helps me in my head to see, like like as an example, you know, when I was on my show and um, uh, my, the way my head works is you know I got really depressed. And then you were you messaged me a few months ago, and you're like, "Um, I'm trying to listen to your show, but you don't have a new episode." Yeah. And it just hit me, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> like, like <laughs> Joel just Joel is actually listening to my show. Like, <laughs> you know, he you know he, the only he should only be looking for his ads. You know, he shouldn't <laughs> be actually listening to my show. But if Joel's like actually listening to my show then I need to get up and I need, you know, it, it's crazy, man. That one message. Well, I, I enjoy, I enjoy the whole podcast community. I enjoy listening to people's show. I listen to yours. I listen to a bunch of people's. And I think that the content is where it's at. I think that if you're giving something that's, that's useful to people, then it should be shared. No doubt. Um, I share your show a few times and I will share it a few times more like i just i think that people should be i think that people should have their options and i think that people should um i don't know it's just an it's an amazing medium and it's 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 grateful to have people like you out there that are that are creating content and i think that yeah. that's what people should be excited for well i know i know you got a bunch of people to listen to um to podcasts so i'll say that uh, if you don't mind, yeah, go uh, ahead. Anyone that wants to talk about literally anything, um, if they just want to find whatever platform they're on and type in the lock on any uh, the lock on everything, they will find me. Absolutely. Um, or they can just email me at the lock on everything at gmail dot com and be like, "Yo, I listened to you on Joel's show, and let's go talk about this because you know I disagree with your opinions on the army, or I disagree." you know that yeah. you're religious or i disagree okay cool let's disagree but let's talk about it let's talk you know? about it exactly yeah. i'm not gonna let i'm not gonna let no one come on my show and be like you know call someone else racist or or any of those other stupid words yeah, yeah, because yeah. To, yeah. to me all that means is you don't have an argument yeah yeah yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you're just getting I mean, violent and if if a person really is then let's stand together and say that's what they are but yeah. just because you disagree with them you can't say that's what they are and like, well, how can you prove him? Like, no, I just don't agree with him. So, yeah, that's what they are. Um, exactly. But other than that, man.
Nothing interesting on TV? That's why you're listening to DVRadio.net WDVR. This ain't reality TV! It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal! It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Oh, well, isn't that special? Bloody, don't you think you should rephrase that? Mom, mama said, my mama said, mama said that. My mom. Good day, sir! Now class is dismissed, gentlemen.